Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and I got for you a review of a neat new Quadcopter. Now, you've seen the, the ViFly R220 before. This is the ViFly R220 M2. Now, this is ready in both uh, ready to fly, but also in much cheaper uh, uh, bind and fly versions, including uh, FreeSky, FlySky, and DSM2, DSMX. I got the FreeSky version for flight here. One thing they've also done from the previous versions is they beefed up the motors. These are now 2600 kV 2205 motors and they've also in, uh, beefed up the ESCs on this. They're now they're 25 30 amp max uh, ESCs to give it uh, a lot more oomph there. In addition I'm going to be flying with a 4S battery. This is 4S capable so that should have plenty of oomph on this particular quadcopter. Um, things on this, this quadcopter has an on, omnibus F4 flight control board loaded with uh, um, uh, on the bus, <laughs> beta flight on the bus 3.1.7. Um, it's available in yellow, red, white, or black. It also has a 700 TVL camera up front there, uh, which is a 40 channel FPV system. And what's neat about this FPV system is it's available in 20, you can set it to 25, 200, or even 500 milliwatt transmission power by holding down this button here. This button quick presses and two second press you can ch switch between channels or bands and channels actually channels and bands and then a four second press it'll switch between 25, uh, 200 and 500 milliwatt. And this is the bind and fly version. This is your bind button here and to bind it you have to turn on the transmitter put your transmitter into bind mode before powering on this quadcopter while simultaneously holding down this button and it should automatically bind to your transmitter. So that's it. Again, the ViFlies, the R220s were made to keep things simple, but the bind and fly version, you are likely going to need to go into to beta flight. I had to go into beta flight at least. Um, the one thing I did have to change is that uh, this uh, was mapped out in uh, AETR. Um, you have to go re remap it to uh, throttle uh, aileron, elevator, and rudder, T-A-E-R, uh, to get it, at least I did, to get it to bind with my FreeSky transmitter. Uh, you might not need to do that with the DSM transmitter or the FlySky transmitter, bind and fly versions, but I had to do that with my uh, FreeSky. Additionally, I had to select D16 mode. Uh, the, the receiver on this is for D16 mode transmitters. Uh, the transmitter set to D16 mode, so you, it won't bind in, it won't bind in uh, D8 mode. So... Okay, let's go for a fly this thing, see how it performs. Hope you enjoy this flight. Okay, we're going to start off with uh, uh, visual line of sight flying in angle modes, just so you can see it up close. And I'm turning on the transmitter. Then we'll switch to acro here shortly. But we're going to start off line of sight. Let me get the transmitter started first. And plugging in the quadcopter. And starting my record. Starting the camera. Hitting record on this camera. And I'm also going to be recording the FPV video from the quadcopter. Okay, we should have signal. And the camera's pointing somewhat high. Let me move that camera down a bit, folks. Hold on, that's a little too high. There we go. Actually, let's move it down a little more. That's good enough there. And also I want to record so camera DVR, and that should be good. Hitting record, hitting record. Okay, we are recording FPV video. That camera's still too high. <laughs> Hold on, folks. <laughs> I am moving that camera a lot farther downward. <laughs> okay, we're good there. So let's start off with line of sight flying. And arming it. Motor is armed and taking off in line of sight mode first. Going around so you can see it. Let me get a feel for it, how it feels first. Bringing it in close, and we'll try its first punch here shortly. 
Ready, set. A lot of punch. <laughs> to be expected with us 4S motors. Now, where I'm flying today, I really can't open it up out here in this park. So don't expect me to do high speed flying, but I will be flying acro here shortly. Bringing it down. And one more punch I'll demonstrate. Ready, set. Wow. <laughs> Tons of punch on this thing. Okay, let's try some acro flying. It's going to be low and slow acro flying. Again, because of the location where I'm at today. Not a lot of room here to, to mess, <laughs> mess with. So, before we do that, let me get the feel. It's actually nice. Nice flyer in that angle mode. Okay, let me disarm it. And I'll put on the goggles and we'll start flying. Okay, putting on my goggles and right away you notice we do have uh, um, OSD with us. So I can keep a, a watch on my battery here. And selecting acro. That is an acro. And let's go up into the air. Oh, I got to arm it too. Adjust this a little bit better. And up we go. Give a little too much oomph there on the takeoff there because of the way I got this camera set. But again, I'm, I can't go real fast here today because of where we're at. Normally I like to go out into the desert and open this up big time. But we are in a park. Well. This is the maintenance lot of part. Whoa, came a little too close. So we're just going to do flights around here until I get the feel of it. 15.2 volts. So we're going to go down to about 14 volts and then I'm going to land it. So let's take it up first and try something out first. And there we go. There we go. And then coming back down again. Now the Vi Fly, you know, is supposed to be super easy to set up. The Ready to Fly one is really easy to set up. Uh, this one here, you have to have a little bit of knowledge on how to find a quad drop. Um, it took me a while to figure that one out with this being that it had required D16 mode. Um, you know, usually I'm used to using D8 mode on Free Sky. But this has got an advanced transmitter one that's, I guess it's 32 channel in D16 mode. And uh, took me a while to figure that out. Again, low, slow, and not too fast because I don't want people complaining where I'm at here. This guy's flying his quad cup for 100 miles an hour through the area. But I uh, gotta do that. <laughs> Uh, use common sense, folks, where you fly at. Um, if you're flying in parks, especially with a racer, <laughs> don't, don't make yourself look dangerous. Okay? Uh, be gentle <laughs> with the area you're flying at. Um, if this was a, a little uh, nano or micro FPV quite tough, yeah, I'd, I'd give it the orbit. But as this is a big, this is a big 250, I'm not. I'm trying to be uh, careful here so folks will let me fly here again. And good range on it, got good. You know, I got it set to 200 milliwatts right now. So my FPV reception is excellent. Fourteen point five volts. Going up again. <laughs> Demonstrating that. It's a good one. Let's bring it in close. Going around the trees. Excellent reception. Excellent uh, control range. 
This is a good long flyer. And put a 4S battery. You know, I got the 4S battery. I should be really zipping it, but I am not going to do that. But the 4S battery also gives you the benefit of longer flight time than you would normally get from a 3S battery. Especially this one I got in here. It's a big one. And I guess it's the biggest you can actually fit in there. I'll show you it here shortly after the landing. Try to keep an eye on it. I'm sorry, Ed. Oh, yeah. It's going around. Let's bring his bike closer. Look. <laughs> Oops, went a little too far that <laughs> way. Okay, that's our battery warning. We're going to bring it in now. 3.5 volts per cell. There we are. So that's the flight. Let me disarm it. Um, notice that it has a beeper too, folks. Here comes some beeper. And are we still recording? Yes, we are. So that's the flight of the VR220. Actually, a nice quadcopter. <laughs>